Right, so Mayoko. Uh, matchmaking carrier, but it's a ranger. You're running Hydra though. Mayoko is actually pretty damn good with defensive AA. People tend to underestimate the AA power of the Mayoko, and it's surprisingly efficient running it. Also, it's not really the best brawler, so you don't really get that much value out of the Hydro usually because, well, Mayoko is the definition of a mid to long range specialist, but if you have to go close range, well, your really slow turret traverse becomes an issue, and your really awkward torpedo angles become an issue, and you have a vulnerable citadel if you're giving broadside. Um, Whereas with defensive AA, if you're playing back a bit in the mid to long range, you can provide a lot of AA cover to your teammates because once again the AA is surprisingly good on the Mayoko. I think it might even be better on the Mayoko than it is on the Mogami. So fundamentally, Captain Redbeard, thank you for the sub. Also, the fact that you're at tier 7 means that you're, you're basically in the gold and seal clubbing tier, which means you're constantly going to be running into Rangers, Hirius, um, Saipans, Kagas. There's Plenty of reason to run defensive AA because even though carriers might not be as common at at the other tiers, at tier 7 you tend to run into them all the time. Now the Mayoko is about to get buffed. The upcoming IGN cruiser buff is going to improve the turret traverse by 25% and it's going to give the ship Zhao dispersion which is incredibly powerful. So the ship is going to become a lot stronger. That's actually in next patch 0.7.11, that's when both those buffs are coming out. So. If, if you're choosing to grind it now, well, you could postpone it a bit, just play something else in between and then come back to a much more enjoyable experience because the slow turret traverse is one of the staple downsides of the Mayoko. It takes a long time to keep your guns on target and when you turn sharply, you have a hard time keeping track of the target as well because of that slow traverse. Ultimately though, pushing up aggressively, a bit questionable. I mean, you do have some island cover here, but you gotta keep in mind that if you get spotted from here right now, you're gonna have to turn... It's a bit sketchy, but if you do get some good damage in, because your DDs are scouting, it might turn out to be good. The problem is the carrier right now. If you were running defensive AA, you could provide a lot of support for your team, and you could shred those planes. On the other hand, you don't really have access to any of that. Switch to torpedoes. When you, when you see a DD start smoking up like that, this is when you switch to torpedoes. You switch to torpedoes to see how much he's slowing down, accelerating, whatever, so you get a better idea, because just watching him smoke up can mean many things. It, mean, it can mean he's gonna stop in the smoke, or it can mean that he's gonna keep sailing full speed. So, you got a long reload on the ship. It's always had a long reload. So use the time between volleys to switch to the torpedo view, and use the white indicator, like the, the predictive indicator, to give you an idea of how much gun lead you need to take when you're shooting ships. It it makes it a lot easier to nail destroyers and it's pretty important to try to nail every single volley because Mayoko has a very long reload. But ultimately the bread and butter of this ship is the guns. Even though I complained about the slow turret traverse and the long reload, you actually have a really good fire chance and you got IGN HE which is kind of brutal. In this case though, you one of the DDs went down but you got a lot of ships pushing into this cap and the enemy is playing quite safe. I would probably try to position over here on the flank. If you get behind the islands here on the flank, you can harass the battleships over the islands, you can provide a lot of support. But this is very risky. Why is this very risky? Because if we go to free view, you actually have an island on your left. And I hate putting islands between me and potential broadsides. If you're suddenly, if you end up under a lot of pressure and you're forced to turn left, the island might block your escape. But seeing as your team, strangely enough, is actually pushing very aggressively, you can kind of keep playing aggressive without any downsides. Switch the torp view, switch the torp view. If the vanguard suddenly starts, starts accelerating, it takes a while for that forward motion to transfer to, to the smokestacks. Whereas if you are sitting with the torpedo view open, as soon as it starts accelerating, the white indicator will tell you. So keep always switch between volleys now you should be switching to torpedo view to give you an idea is he gonna change course or is he still reversing at the same speed try to make try to make it a habit in the Mayoko and in general it serves you well in all IGN uh, cruisers keep in mind that the lightning was around the lightning might be torping your war spite so running Hydra earlier might have been an option if not for yourself, then just for the fact that you actually have a battleship that wants to play very aggressive and you want to support that kind of play. Because as long as he's playing aggressive, he is their primary target. 
When he goes down, you're the primary target. So using a consumable cooldown to help keep him alive as long as possible, probably a pretty good trade-off. Or one uses the movement indicator mods that are totally legal, as Wargaming said again and again. Yeah, well, I comment based on unmodded gameplay, because I don't really like that one. I think it's an unfair advantage. I also don't like the angling mod and some other mods that are out there. I think um, if it gives, if I, if a mod allows me to do something that I cannot do with the vanilla game, then I think it's a textbook example of an unfair advantage. There you see the extremely slow to traverse. It takes ages for the guns to come around. In this point, though, you see the Bismarck has disengaged. You see Bismarck has run off. New Orleans is kiting, Vanguard is under pressure. There's nothing stopping you from pointing your nose right at this lightning, activating Hydro, supporting your War Spite on the way, and putting pressure on this Vanguard. Right now, what you're sitting here is waiting for the Baltimore to finally pop his radar. During this entire time, you could have been farming this Vanguard. It's also a Royal Navy smoke, which means it will run out soon, so he will be forced to disengage soon. I like that. That was patience. Uh, that's something that you often learn with experience. Um, new players, as soon as they see a DD, they point, they point the crosshair and they instantly pull the trigger. But what you saw there was taking those few extra seconds to get a better idea of what he's doing. I don't like this though. Sitting in tunnel vision, even though someone is targeting you, you're giving full broadside to the vanguard and he's in fact shooting you and you're not noticing it. You react, but too late, and you get citadel. That the reason why you ate all that AP was literally tunnel vision. You sat with your in with your gun sight zoomed in for no reason. Your guns weren't ready; they were still reloading. You, the DD was sailing in a straight line, so there was nothing really to observe, and that tunnel vision cost you half your health. At higher tiers, you might be able to recover a lot of that health with uh, heals. But in mid to low tiers, cruisers losing health is actually a huge problem. Especially the Mayoko that likes to play a bit more aggressive in the midfield. Um, going low on health will gimp your gameplay a lot. And make it a lot harder to basically fulfill your own role. At this point though, the cap is secured. The enemy team has ran off so far. It's really no point chasing them. So I do approve of this changing sides and seeing if you can support the other flank. At this point, I would probably already start taking an angle like this. Like this way. That way you could support from here, while at the same time your team would be providing a crossfire from here. Whereas if you keep going straight like this, well, you're gonna basically pop out full broadside here. Which can work, most especially because their carrier has managed to die, which is a bit uncommon, but usually the risk in doing this if a carrier is alive is that if you get unfortunately plane spotted as you're coming around the corner, the entire ambush gets ruined. But if you took a wider angle, you would already be able to start shooting. Problem is, the longer it takes for you to get here, um, the longer your teammates have to suffer. Because these guys, they're, they're boxed in. You see the crossfire the enemy has going here? These guys are boxed in. It's only a matter of time before they get rushed and they die. And unless you can provide a threat from this angle to discourage them, they're just gonna keep going. Switch to AP. Oh, well actually, I don't know if you have expert loader. I don't know if you have expert loader. That's a true point. If you had, they both angling away, but you, I don't know if you have expert loader. I'm, I usually, if I have, see an opportunity of getting some AP volleys in, like at this point, this Nuremberg is probably going to turn right around the island. That's what they usually do when they go around the island like that. Unless the Budioni is spotted. Uh, AP here, AP would be so juicy. Unfortunate, but HE will work fine. I would have used the torpedo indicator again to get a better idea of how he's moving, but you do land a bit of chip damage. Not enough lead, but once again, switch the torpedo view between volleys to get a better idea of how much lead you need to take. At this point, uh, consider using Hydro soon. This deed, uh, they saw shells coming from here. Is the Leningrad going to be torping in this direction? Has the Bismarck behind you been spotted? You have a Bismarck behind you. This guy is a juicy torpedo target. Nice, you pop Hydra now. And at this point, I would expect the Leningrad to be torping the guy behind you, not torping you. Pop spotter plane as soon as it comes up. Yeah, Helena AP might be coming in. Pop the spotter plane. Do you have AP loaded? No. There's the torpedoes we expected. 
Not sure if they were for you or if for the Bismarck. Problem here is you lost so much health earlier. Wow, that was lucky. The Helena could probably have killed you because his DPM is so absurd. He actually eats one of the torps from behind. Your Mayhan is hunting their destroy their CV even though the DD is a CV is dead, which is unfortunate. Focus fire the plane. The only thing keeping vision of you right now is this plane. You need to control click it. You're not doing it. The only thing that's keeping you spotted right now is that plane. If you had control clicked it, maybe you would have been able to shoot it down, in which case playing more aggressive here would have been an option. So when this indicator, when the plane pops up on this indicator, it means that you are not. there's nothing normal spotting you. The only thing that's spotting you is the plane. And if you nullify the plane, that means you actually get undetected. So those kind of small things, those are details, but uh, keeping an eye, out the eye on them might help you. Because if you got undetected there, there would have been nothing really stopping you from playing more aggressive in that position. Those two are fairly boxed in. Your Bismarck is the issue though. He might easily eat torpedoes and die. Actually the carrier is spotting. The carrier seems to know what he's doing. He's actually manual dropping into the smoke. And he landed a torpedo by the looks of it. You could have shot into the smoke blind there. Yeah, you know who's there. You could have shot there based, based on that torpedo impact. If you aim at the exact spot where the torpedo hit, and you can use the minimap, because the Leningrad was kind enough to be spotted where he's, uh, before he smoked up, you know he's moving on this axis. So you could have put the circle on him while shooting. And you probably would have had a fairly good chance of hitting a, a one or two hits. And considering he ate the torpedo, probably ate flooding, that could have been a kill. Yep, there we go. Shoot the Leningrad. Oh. Okay, you were communicating. That's fine. Not enough lead. Once again, a torpedo indicator. Switch the torpedo indicator. Switch the torpedo indicator. What is he doing? Is he slowing down to juke the Bismarck volley? Is he going full speed? He gets killed, luckily. You should start kiting away. You do not push into Cleveland. No, no, you should be turning turning hard away and getting the hell out. This is very, very dangerous. Uh, Cleveland sucks at dealing damage to cruisers that dodge and kite away at mid to long ranges, whereas Mayoko is very good at it. But if the closer you get, the more damage he will do. His DPM is increasing exponentially the closer you get, because he has an easier time hitting you. And when it comes to IFHE Cleveland, his damage is much, much better than yours. You do switch to AP, which I like, but he might still kill you before you manage to take him down. Yeah. He's gonna take you down, isn't it? Yep, as expected. Um, Cleveland and any general light cruisers, they are really, really good at their their damage. Their damage literally looks like a curve when you get close enough. It literally looks like a curve. It goes straight up into the sky. But in this case, with the Bismarck spotting and giving firepower, there was nothing really stopping you from maybe turning around like this, starting to kite a bit, angling and just farming them, and then farming the Nuremberg. Uh, on something like a Cleveland, using pure HE isn't really a problem because he has no armor, so you, you would deal raw damage regardless. And Nuremberg's good. Wait, is he whiffing? Nah, he's gonna hit one. That's all he needs. Still though, uh, I would say overall, I don't think you made too many mistakes. Just common new player mistakes, um, like fine-tuning things like uh, tunnel vision not switching to torpedo view enough and uh, not realizing what was spotting you at what point and so forth. But most of those things are things you can learn just by playing more. So ultimately, I didn't really see any big issues. You didn't, you played fairly safe in general, no stupid overaggression. One of the most common cru early cruiser mistakes is silly overaggression. Right. Jean Bart, let's see. Very questionable game, I am new. Yeah, I, li I like the questionable games. I'm not interested in the e-penis games. The only e-penis I want to be stroking here is my own, so I prefer to see the average games. Okay, we got a Sharn Horse game. Let's check that, up, that one out. Mm -mm -mm. Sharnhorst. 
And that's one of those ships that they scale, well, it's pretty good against everything, but the Scharnhorst is so much easier to play when you're top tier compared to higher, uh, low tier. Would you recommend Bon Jovi or Stalingrad from Steel? I mean, both are really, really strong. Um, I don't think the Bon Jovi is going to see any competitive use, whereas the Stalingrad has completely replaced the Moskva. I mean, I don't know if any of you looked, looked at King of the Sea, but during the entire finals of King of the Sea, I think we saw like 60 Stalingrads and we saw one Moskva from one single dude. And that one single dude later in the tournament switched to Stalingrad himself. So... That Sta Stalingrad, Stalingrad has in basically entirely replaced the Moskva when it comes to competitive. Uh, bon Jovi, I don't think it's gonna see competitive. Well, I don't know. The HE spam can be pretty disgusting with this thing. I doubt it's gonna see it to the same extent, but Bon Jovi is a very, very strong ship. It's the cost that's... Well, actually, have they published the cost? Has Wargaming already published the cost of the Bon Jovi? I don't know if I can talk about that. It might be NDA. They haven't published the cost. Okay. No, but it leaked on Reddit. Oh. What was the leak? Actually, I, fuck. No, no, I can't talk about it because I'll I, I'll end up confirming or denying, and that would be breaking NDA itself. So, I'm gonna stop talking about that. Right, let's move on to the commentary itself. Uh, Sharnhorst, what are you against? No carrier? That's pretty fine, I mean, uh, you have fairly good, if you run the correct build, you have fairly good concealment. Actually, looking at your build, you're running something sketchy here. Your concealment is 15.2, that's not concealment build, that's something questionable. I wonder what kind of build you're running here, buddy. Lack of concealment is very questionable. Um, Battleship-wise, Massachusetts, you want to avoid brawling, of course, uh, Bismarck, Massachusetts, unless you can ambush them. Basically, if you can force a nose, nose, in, nose versus nose engagement where you can kill them with your torps before their secondaries can shred you, sure. But most of the time, you probably want to maintain a mid, mid distance. Is it full secondary build? I have a 10 point captain. Okay, so it's a new captain. I assume your first four points went into fire prevention. And that's a perfectly valid option. Some classic battleship AP to begin the game off with. Dealing damage to the DD is always a good start. Now, something to keep in mind here is that uh, there's a Richelieu behind this island. And no one really has vision of him. But if you were to pop your fighter plane, you might be able to provide it. You see he's hiding behind here. When, you, when your plane starts circling like this, it might give you vision, which might make it easier for you. You're tracking every Seychelles, which is okay. What you want to keep in mind now, though, that you saw two DDs go in here, so there might be incoming orbs. And it looks like you're taking that into account. Looking at the minimap, the first thing you notice, by the way, is that the entire enemy team is lemming in this way. And more importantly, your team has taken full control of A. That means that the battle will shift in this in this kind of circle there will be more and more pressure coming down on this flank and this flank will slowly from your side start steamrolling so your goal here isn't actually to play aggressive in any way um, what you should be doing is playing a delay tactic you buy time you slow them down you delay them another thing you are a fairly agile ship with fast turret traverse what you're doing right now is you're going the exact same way as all your battleships are going so, there is soon no crossfires. Your team is slowly moving towards this edge here. So that means all the enemy, all your team's firepower will come from this flank. So what, at this point, I would do is just calmly make a full U-turn like this. And maybe position yourself somewhere around here. And then provide a crossfire. Because then you would have shells coming from here and from here. And especially in the Sharnhorst, because you have such small shell caliber, you lack the overmatch that the bigger battleships do. You want to be able to find those broadsides. You want to be able to find those opportunities to make use of that improved DPM. Your vanguard is doing something special. Torps from there, you know there's the DD there. This would be a good time to pop your fighter plane. Just for information. 
I would at this point I would pop the fighter plane just for information. It will give you some scouting of what the Bismarck and the Richard Torpedoes U are doing. It might spot some incoming torpedoes. It might even get lucky and spot the destroyer. Ultimately, though, you're holding on to the fighter plane for absolutely no reason at this point. I I assume you really love that shell view, but you need to keep moving. You shouldn't be parking here. No, no, you can't stop. This is bad. Parking nose in is bad. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, there's the DD in front of you. At this point, the fighter plane in the air is absolutely must have. He probably is going to be torping soon. You need to get that fighter plane up. And more importantly, you need to start disengaging from this position. Your team is steadily pushing here. They are steadily steamrolling. But in doing this kind of push, they're forcing the enemy your way. So you're going to be taking more and more pressure on this flank. So you need to start chilling out, angling away. You know, there's a D there, you know there's a DD over here, because he's smoked up and be shooting. You know there's a DD here. If you keep pushing like this, you're pushing into a torpedo crossfire. There's the torps. A fighter plane might have helped there. We saw him sail past. You knew the torp were coming. You took it on the nose. And now the Akisuke will start shooting you. All of this, very, very predictable. You can still disengage. You can still use this opportunity. You have a German turtle back. Whoa, what the fuck is this? This camera is so glitchy when I try to release it. Holy shit. There we go. You can't- no, no, you're turning the wrong way. You're turning into the danger. At this point, you still have a chance. You could have sailed up towards this island, maybe and then turned around behind the island to get the hell out. At this point, you are committing to a basically a lost cause. And your fighter plane is still not in the air. Your fighter plane might spot the DD here. Might spot torps coming from here. It wouldn't be a surprise if there were torps coming from here. It might spot the reloaded torps coming from here as well. Are you gonna drop your own torps? This would be a good time to do it as you turn away. While you're disengaging, drop torps. There we go. That's good. You can make a full turn at this point because you know there's a you know there's a DD here. You can't keep pushing this way. There's torps coming. Heavy heart hitting Akizuki torps. At this point I would make a full turn and drop the other side torpedoes as well. And just start disengaging. Start kiting away, buy time, try to survive. An angled Sharn horse can live for a long time. Hi. Captain BSV, thank you for the three months. You still have your plane ready. Don't be afraid. The same thing I said in the Mayoka commentary. The fact that you have torpedoes is more use than simply being able to simple and simply an advantage in brawling you can also use it to predict enemy speeds you can use it to see what kind of speed the enemy is moving at and there's the problem i talked about the akizuki he's smoking up because well you turned away so he knows he can't torp so instead he just smokes up and starts farming you you also got a heal ready you should be using every cooldown consumable usage is absolutely one of the things i would prioritize here especially the fighter plane you brought five fighter planes to the battle and you didn't use a single one. That's not very good. Especially since you're missing out on a lot of potential scouting from it. Okay. That DD shouldn't be a surprise though. We saw him smoke up a long time ago. We knew he was there from the get-go. Gun same that the Richelieu, you can shoot his flat broadside. He's, you're, you're gonna get spotted anyway, shoot him before he comes around the corner. There we go. Angle away from him. His guns are turning your way, angle away, angle away. Make him shoot the vanguard instead, make the vanguard a juicier target than you are. Right now you're just as juicy as a target as the vanguard, which is not, not, not a good thing. Because you have no health to tank with. See that? He's going for you because you are just as attractive as a target as the vanguard. That's not enough lead. Use the torpedo prediction to get an idea of how much lead. He should shot you because, well, the vanguard started angling, but you didn't. So you became the most attractive target for the battleship. And you went down. Well, I would say... Map awareness. What's going on on the other parts of the map besides your own. The fact that they would eventually push up here was predicted basically on minute two when we saw that our team was bulldozing their way through here. That's th that's usually how a battle flows. If one side collapses, the other side kind of panic pushes, because, well, they can't go this way, so they try to panic push through. So, and pushing nose in, when you know there's an enemy push and there's enemy destroyers, it's just gonna lead to disaster. I'm so humble. 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 I'
Swim Pirate War. 19 months. Thank you very much. 19 months of salt from Flamu and a toxic chat keep it coming. Oh, what, what kind words? What kind words? That's what I want to hear. Right, so we did a battle cruiser, a cruiser, a battle cruiser. Let's do a Farragut replay next. Let's do a Farragut replay next. I have no idea to BB. My average Farragut game. Is that the one I'm doing right now? I think that's the one I'm doing right now. Swimpire. Yeah, he loves when I call him Swimpire. He likes to pretend his name is something else, but we all know it's Swimpire. Oh, I wonder, was this an old replay? Because it's not... Oh, no, it's working. Do you do CV replays? Well, first of all, I haven't played CVs in long enough to care. Uh, or to be like up to date on what exactly the best things are. Second of all, replays are really buggy because you can't see the mouse cursor and you can't see a lot of the things that are happening. And that's especially uh, obvious when you're watching carrier replays. So it's, it's you have a hard time of actually Action deciphering stations. what's going on. Right. Destroyer gameplay. Farragut, aka... Hybrid gunboat. Um, your concealment is 7.3. Is that concealment expert? No, that's not concealment expert. 7.3 isn't concealment expert. No, no, Farragut has better concealment than that. Are you retraining your captain? Also, wait, how many guns do you have? You got five guns? Okay, good. He might not have concealment expert. Yeah, he doesn't have concealment expert. That's that's very very debatable in that case. Target the hybrid question mark. Yes, you actually do use your both torpedoes and guns a fair bit. Um, you use your torpedoes mostly when when kiting away or for ambush plays, um, and you don't have enough. Your gun ballistics aren't good enough for you to be a pure gunboat. So even the Farragut is a bit of a hybrid. First things first, no carrier, that gives you a lot of flexibility. Second of all, you don't have much support going into this camp, so if you face multiple enemies, then you need to play very safe. Look at the minimap, your, your two radars are pushing down to where they are most useless, as usual. Why go to the island cover where they can hide behind and be useful when they, go, they can go into the open water? That's how it works in random battles. The enemy has Minsk Icarus Shinonome. Well, Minsk, you can outspot normally. Without Concealment Expert, it might be rough. Icarus and Shinonome you can outgun, but both can probably outspot you quite comfortably, provided they have Concealment Expert. It's kind of the first thing you should go for, so at tier 6 it's, it's somewhat expected to have it. Pushing aggressive into the camp is good. Uh, on the other hand, at this point, you don't want to park perfectly behind the island. Like, the problem with parking like this is a DD can sail up behind this island and you will never see him coming. Even a cruiser can push up to this island and you will never see him coming. And the problem is, if you don't see him, then your team can't shoot him. So the Algeri and Nagato you have behind you, they can't help you in any way if they don't get any vision. I like the fact that you're leaving the island cover now and you are spotting around it. A lot of the enemy team gets spotted down here. We see the Minsk and we see the Shinonome and we, we already established that these two were in the division. So we can, we can predict that the destroyer is also down here. So that means you have fru full destroyer freedom on this cap. And with these guys all lemming and down here, you should absolutely try to move your way towards B. See if you can support. Do they have any radar cruisers? No. That's actually pretty good matchmaking in that sense. 9 point captain at this time, I got a 10 point after this game. Okay. At this point though, I would normally I would maybe entertain the idea of pushing through here, but they have a Leon here. Leon and Fuso, that's a lot of battleship AP. So maybe just try to push into B and see if you can support your team there. Engine boost activated. At this point, you might want to tell your team that they need to go to sea. This is something of a big issue I have in random battles, is that battleship players, they love to go to the one cap where they are also most useless. Your team holds A, 
where are all your battleships going? Well, or sorry, C. All your battleships are sailing towards C, even though that's where they are least needed. But that's just something you can't really do much about. That's just potatoes, big potato. Was shooting here really worth it? You were completely undetected. No one knew where you were. You were moving in complete stealth. You might be able to surprise some DD here who has no idea that you suddenly showed up. In return, you gave up your position and where you were hitting for 200 damage. Those are not the kind of shots you should take. It's one thing if you can YOLO or you can get a kill or whatever, but right now, you, that's, you see that Minsk, he's already running away. You might have been able to catch him much easier off guard uh, if for the fact that you hadn't basically put up a big horn and let the entire world know that, hey, by the way, I'm coming this way. You have an Akatsuki behind you, you can slow down and smoke up. Because you're about to be, be Leoned pretty hard here soon. See the Akatsuki behind you? He will spot that DD for you if you just smoke up. So right now you are risking a lot of health. And luckily all the battleship AP lands around you. But keep in mind that you are not necessarily always the only thing, only one spotting. When you find opportunities like this, for example with the potato Akatsuki grounding right behind you, Use them, smoke up, mitigate the damage you take, and deal damage in return. At this point you can easily push into the cap, they're still occupied with capping this here. Your battleships have of course finally reached- oh, there's a DD here. Somewhere here. He's not in the cap, so he can't be down here. You know, you know he was here. You know the DD is somewhere around here. Engine boost deactivated. Rushing the Leon is not a good idea. He's going to die anyway, he's horribly out of position. That's already a dead ship. Smoke generator started. Was it worth smoking? Because now if you pick a fight with that DD, well first of all you can't spot the DD. Second of all, if you now try to play aggressive, well you won't have your smoke available. I'm not sure if, because the problem with doing this kind of play in a Royal Navy destroyer, or even a let's say, what's it called, Pan-Asian destroyer, would be pretty okay because the smoke cooldown is very, very short. You, you always have it available for any engagement you want. But in this case, your smoke cooldown is massive. This is premium smoke cooldown and it's still well over two minutes. Also, you know there was a DD here. And you know who's in the cap now. There are torps coming for this smoke. Absolutely guaranteed there are torpedoes coming for this smoke. Now, you don't want to actually completely disengage. Oh, you're about to leave the cap. I don't think you're paying attention. Ooh, barely stayed inside. Problem is, once again, the damage you dealt, that was 10... If that had been 10k to a destroyer, I would perfectly fine. Or, well, maybe 6k to a destroyer. But it was 6k to a Leon. Not worth the trade-off. The DD luckily leaves the camp, and you actually manage to secure it, but <sighs> questionable smoke usage. Luckily the enemy team is being just as potato as your team, whereas your battleships all went to the camp you had, the enemy battleships also went to the one camp that they had, so they, they're kind of competing in who can be most useless, which is, once again, very common for random battles. The torps? Those were just in case then. I, I didn't mind those torps at all. It was in case the DD tried to push him behind this island here. Some preempted torpedoes. Nothing wrong with throwing them out since uh, he wasn't gonna have... Like, by the time he can use torpedoes on anything Engine meaningful, they're activated. gonna be available again. So I don't, I don't mind throwing them out. You know, they both DDs are alive, you know they like the division. So, if you're gonna play aggressive, you should probably chill a bit until your smoke is ready. See, this is why I don't like it. You, if you play, if, let's say that you run into, the Icarus is spotted luckily, the Icarus for some reason is gunboating over there. But, let's say if you ran into the Shinonome down here, and both he and the Icarus opened up on you, you would be in a 2 versus 1 without smoke available. That would get you pretty damn pretty damn hard. It doesn't matter how good you are, 1 versus 2 against 2 DDs is always going to be extremely hard to come out as on top. You will almost always go down or eat significant damage. Okay, 
smoking up to deal damage. There's a Shinonoma still around. You should be focusing the Shinonoma. There's a Shinonoma down south. Bit of tunnel vision going on here. Hunger for that gunboat damage. I'm not sure how I feel about it. On one hand, the Shinonoma isn't being very useful where it is. On the other hand, your Nagata is probably going to die. So, in term, this was a kind of a selfish thing, but your Nagato is pushing into the enemy base like an idiot. So, I, I don't. I honestly have a hard time feeling any sympathy for that Nagato because out of all the positions he could go, he's choosing the worst possible one. So I, I'm not really that opposed to this move. Uh, if the Nagato was sailing next to you like this and pushing into the cap and like pushing as a team this way, then scouting over here would be the best move since you would be keeping useful members alive. But when your Nagato is setting an enemy spawn and now your teammates are following into the enemy spawn, like, wow, your, your battleships are really trying to make the best possible effort in being useless. When this kind of thing happens, then I don't know how highly I value scouting for them. Right now, though, I would go hunt the Shinonoma. You've lost vision for this for a while. You're already so far away, you're unlikely to get any sort of significant damage in. You want to start considering accelerating and just hunting down the Shinonoma before he kills all your potatoes. Gunboating in the open. Once again, was it really worth it? Now the Shinonoma knows where you are and he knows that you might be on his trail. Okay, now I don't like this now that you're, you're tunnel visioning this. You got a whole lot more firepower behind you. You got like three BBs behind you, which will do so much more damage to this guy than you can do. But the one thing none of these guys can do is deal with the destroyer that's going to be hunting them. And that should be your job. You should be going down here hunting the Shinonome, keeping him away from your potato BBs and keeping them alive. Also, you should be switching target to the Icarus at this point. There's an Icarus up north, who's about to engage your Akatsuki. You're kind of letting the entire t t team know where you are as well, for very pitiful damage. The biggest issue I have with the damage you deal is that um, you're dealing light damage and a bit of HE uh, chip damage to battleships. And they are very resistant and capable of healing all that damage. So the actual impact that the damage numbers have is practically non non existent. Engine boost activated. This on the other hand is very useful damage. Hunting down the Icarus. The Icarus though is a much smaller threat than the Shinonome is because well the Icarus really isn't that special. He was quite potato as well. Did he torp? Keep going straight Torpedoes for a while. Direct front. In this case, when you kill a DD and you see he's given broadside, you usually want to keep going straight for a while, just to make sure he didn't actually drop torps your way. And now, the Shinonome, as I mentioned, he's going to be hunting these guys. That's what the Shinonome does best. Going here is pointless. The Fusa is going to die, the Sharnhorse is going to camp A. Um, you don't really provide any benefit on this side of the map. You should still be hunting the Shinonome. When you play hybrids or gunboat focused ships, especially the American line, which is uh, significantly stealthier than, for example, the Russian line, a large part of your role in battles is screening for enemy DDs and killing them. And. Uh, Basically, much of the gameplay we saw from you this game was very Russian destroyer based instead of the standard um, American cruiser. To be fair though, not having concealment expert probably limited you a fair bit. I mean, any DD is going to be hard to play without concealment expert. So I will, I will admit that absolutely it probably limited your efforts, but now the New Mexico is going to get killed by the Shinonome, I assume. Unless he's very potato. Oh, never mind. Queen Elizabeth dies and it ends. Um, I think you... Fundamental issue, I'd say, that replay was 
too big of a focus on what your damage number is as opposed to what exactly is it you're shooting. What are you scouting? What are you shooting? Just like dealing chip damage to BBs is not very effective. If you're a Harugumo, then you can solo kill a battleship very quickly with the firepower and it's worth shooting them. In the Farragut though, kind of sketchy. I think we'll do one last one. One last one. What do, what do we have here? We did a DD, we did a cruiser, we did a battle cruiser. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see. When to be aggressive in FDG and when and not. Friedrich the Grosse gameplay. That ship is a nasty one. Fine, we can check the Fried de Gross. That is a that ship is not a fun experience. One thing to keep in mind also, um, dealing 10k damage to a destroyer is the equivalent of dealing like 40k to a battleship at that tier. Um, if you solo kill a DD, it's the same as getting a devastating torpedo strike on a battleship in terms of XP and rewards. So Instead of wasting all the time duck duck in some battleship, you can do the same thing in a minute to a destroyer. Triple battleship division. Well, first, there's, I, first of all, I hate this. I really hate this division. If your goal is to any sort of success in winning and carrying, then the only time this works somewhat well is when you're running like triple Missouri, because then and then you can kind of counter your weaknesses pretty well. The fundamental issue this kind of setup has though, if you run into a carrier, well, you're not useful at all. Second of all, I mean, you can cycle the hydros, but ultimately if, even with hydro active, you can still be torped because the ship is massive, it's clumsy, and it doesn't have the best torpedo belt either. Ultimately, Friedrich Grosse is a garbage ship right now. It's one of the ships that are slated for buffs in the future. Um, I posted a commentary on, on that. They will be buffing almost all American battleships. They will be buffing the Mayogi and they will be buffing the Friedrich Grosse. Oh, and they are going to be buffing the Izumo as well. Still though, if you're gonna play a three-man battleship division, I assume the point is, well, if you have coordination, which you should since you're divisioning, is that you can play aggressive together. Uh, one of the reasons it's hard to play battleship aggressive on in random battles is that very often, uh, if you try to push in, your team might just leave you out to dry. With three of you though, if you all push together down a flank, it can be pretty rough to deal with it. Why are the USBBs getting buffed? I have no idea. That's what. Well, some of them I understand, like uh, South Carolina, New York, New Mexico. All of those can use a nice chunk of health, or or help, not health, just a nice chunk of help. But then on the other hand, Wyoming has a crazy broadside for tier four. North Carolina is amazing at tier eight. Iowa isn't a bad ship either, so. I don't, I don't really know, but they're buffing all of them, tier 3 to tier 9, all of them are slated for buffs. Shimokaze is pushing the cap, sadly the Shimokaze went behind the island, which means that he's not actually providing any scouting. Sure, he's capping, but he's one of the major roles that he provides, which is scouting, is completely out the window. I assume he's going for some flank, because that's what Shima players love to do. No, Montana isn't game being changed. Montana is in a, in a good spot. Well, first thing you can notice here is already C is entirely uncontested. And, wow, Citadel's on. That kind of dispersion in the Frida de Graza. Nice rigging, buddy. Anyway, first things you might notice is that C is entirely safe. And the enemy team, the one ship you've spotted, is going towards B. So why is your team still sailing towards C? 
the, the, all the things I highlighted in the previous commentary, all the problems with battleships going to where it's where they're least useful, you are fulfilling that prophecy right now. You are sailing towards a cap that is already under your control. When in fact, the, your entire division should right now turn and push through here. All of you guys together should start pushing through here and getting control of B. While you still have these guys here. If you manage to get here while your team is still up here, you got a nice crossfire. If you wait until these run off all the way here, well, then you're the guys who's going to be crossfired. So, at this point, you need to quickly reposition. You're still sailing into C, you already have C. What are you, what are you providing to your team from C right now? Well, you're not providing shit. What are you providing with your three-man division that all the other guys that are sitting in C cannot? Well, you're not providing anything. So, yeah, get your ass into B. Get your ass into B. And please do not sail through their cap into the enemy spawn. Oh god, please don't do that. That is one of my pet peeves. Giving up all the advantages of this fast aggression just to waste it on sailing around in the enemy spawn. Giving the enemy team time to turn around and angle and get position. Oh no, it's actually happening. That is the single most useless smoke I've seen. I mean, I appreciate the, I appreciate the effort this guy's putting in, but uh, this is one of those cases where he should have just saved it for himself. And the problem is, these guys up here, well, they are dying. Brass change, thank you for, uh, thank you for the sub. They are dying and you're, you're still sitting in C. This Montana is all alone. It's only a matter of time before this Montana goes down. And then they will start spreading up to the north. And how the fuck do you intend to get past this mountain line if they can crossfire you? You guys are slowing down. You're, you're still see Like, getting C fast. Great idea. But then you needed to get your ass into gear and get that battleship division into a position where they can actually provide something. I mean, look how much... All your team's firepower is in one clump. You know how I angle or dodge them? I go behind an island here. Or here, or here, or here. I, you don't need to angle against anything. Like, any, any crossfires. Since you're all in one blob. B is being flipped. The Montana, not surprisingly, eating huge amount of damage. Because he's all alone there. And he's being forced back. See these guys, these dumbasses that did, that are pushing into this cap that is perfectly safe. Well, these dumbasses are slowly gonna circle around like this. Longer you take, the harder this becomes. Okay, don't, don't get me wrong, this can still turn out to be a win. Simply because uh, the enemy team will do something dumb like push in into this blob and suicide or whatever. Like anything can happen because it's a random battle but... Um, a win at this point is not because the gameplay was good, but because the enemy team is basically sailing Musashi full broadside around a corner. This, this kind of shit. What is this Musashi doing? Oh my lord. That makes me sad. Like, these guys here, instead of... Oh, this is an example of... These guys, instead of running away, they're pushing into your blob. They have a two cap advantage. They know you're coming from here. All they need to do is kite away and shoot and farm you as they kite away. Instead, they push into you and they face your overwhelming firepower with one ship at a time and they get killed. So yeah, this can absolutely still become a win simply because the enemy team is trying to throw. Like, this, this guy pushed the Musashi into brawl range. Musashi is mid to long range. That's when it excels. Close range like this. Yeah. Not very good. Fundamental issue is that you're almost... They almost have twice your points, just because they have cap control. Map control. Right now it's a race against time. Can you kill these potatoes before these potatoes that are still in, still in A? Ac accidentally become useless. I mean, luckily these guys are also sailing into your spawn. Like, instead of sailing straight through the, through like this and providing a crossfire, these guys are sailing into the, into your spawn. Which is amazing for you guys, because, well, um, it gives you a chance at victory. Ah, 
haven't noticed the cross accord first. I mean, I haven't seen any good battleship play, so this is this is nothing unusual. What is this Montana doing? Oh man. And this might still be a win, because the enemy team is being so horrendously potato. The fundamental issue is though that uh, all your DDs are dead. So right now you need to keep your radars alive. It goes for the ram, but it's far too late. At this point Hydra should be activated. Not activating Hydra right now is a huge mistake. You're coming around a corner, you've been seen coming around this corner for a long time. Any there any battleship, any DDs around here should be preemptively torping. I mean look at this blob, I'd be torping this. So Hydro absolutely should be active at this point. There we go. Hydro activated quite late, but at least it was activated, that's good. Torpedos yep, as expected. The DD is very slow to try to punish this, which is fortunate for you. Now we get one of the main issues though. Well, actually he launched them all into one blob. Which is lucky, because I mentioned that this ship is big and clumsy and it's hard to dodge, uh, dodge torps. If that had been a normal narrow spread, you, you would probably have eaten one or two on the nose. But because this Cossack got greedy and he launched single target all on the same spot, um, you were actually able to dodge them all. So that's quite fortunate. Your damage cannon is on cooldown. This is the time where you should start considering disengaging. Your division teammates are very healthy. You are not, and your damage cannon is on cooldown. So you should start slowing down. Park nose in, start reversing, try to disengage. Maybe turn around, just get the hell out. Multiple different options. Uh, pushing in is the one option that will guarantee your death. Pushing in is the one option that will absolutely guarantee your death. Oh, you got another heal off. You might get a Cossack kill, but... I mean, Cossack isn't a threat to battleships. Cossack has those torps on a massive cooldown, and besides that, it does a bit of pew-pew. It's not really a significant threat, so trading Fritte Grosse for damage on a Cossack, probably not the best trade. You will obviously be going down because, well, you have no way of mitigating the incoming fire. This Hindenburg is luckily potato enough to constantly shoot HE. If the Hindenburg had been using AP on your broadside, you would have died about two minutes ago. Still though, uh, I can't say I like too many things in this battle, honestly. To be brutally honest, I, di I didn't like too many things here. Uh, the Mon the Mon you actually took so long that the Montana has... Whoa, Jesus, can you calm down? You actually took so long that the Montana has managed to rejoin the battle and be use useful. And this might still... Nah, will it end up... It might still end up being a win, but... Probably pretty questionable. Did this game end up being a loss or a win? I wonder. I wonder. Let's see, maybe we can find out. Which one was it? FDG replay. Yeah, it ended up as a defeat, huh? Yep, very much looks like a defeat to me. The entire division died trying to push into crossfires. I mean, look at the hostile state this Frid de Grosse is pushing into now. Like your team, your team is finally pushing into C, but they're doing it after most are dead. And your team positions as well, this Missouri. Like, holy shit, he's literally pushing into a crossfire. He can be shot from here, from here, from here, from here. Um, why not try to support the Friedrich instead? Frid Cross Corfos isn't AFK, no, he's just health perk survivability, a uh, survivability expert Corfos sitting on the A-line. I mean, once again, I'd love to say I'm surprised, but... Oh, actually, wait, are you, no, are you gonna win this? I don't know, this battle could still go either way. 
But once again, regardless of the outcome, I hated this push around this island. I hated this so much. All stations reporting the position of a strategic target. Missouri got the kill on the DD, but he's traded all his health. Um, the Hindenburg is going to be farming him. Missouri can't tank that HE. He's trying to get damage on full HP Izumo. Uh, this is... And there's the Cossack Torps. They missed, but I mean, it doesn't matter. This guy is guaranteed... Yeah, this is a guaranteed loss. And no, nothing to spot the Torps. All the DD is dead a long time ago. It's a guaranteed flood. Which means damage gone if he has it. No, he's just flooding to death. Yeah, this is gonna be a loss. So, once again, triple three-man battleship division. Can, could it, might have worked if as soon as you'd taken C, you would have turned hard into B, and then while your team was still alive, your Montanas and stuff was still alive, you would have pushed hard into B, your Lemming train would probably have continued into spawn, and then you would have this triple-pronged attack of your Lemmings going here, your own team pushing through middle, and then these guys who sat in spawn still being useful. And you would have had a, multiple angles of fire, Lots of map control, and you could have been this spearhead that pushed straight through B. And the best part is, if you pushed into B, and you ended up eating torps, you ended up eating damage, you could have parked behind one of the islands, like the Minotaur did, and like taken a breather, get some healing up, and so forth. Instead, you pushed into the open water, where as soon as you hit the torpedo, everyone knew you were dead. Because there was no way to disengage, no place to take cover, no nothing. So, yeah. The idea might have been there, but the execution did not work. Ultimately, though, when it comes to carrying potential, uh, a triple battleship division is probably one of the hardest to make use, unless you're playing Missouris, because Missouris are so easy. You just you play it kind of play it like a radar cruiser. You park near the caps, and then you just radar and shoot every 